2019 field work is underway in western Kentucky, and Big Tractor Power has been right out in the field in the new year to see these big tractors at work. In this video, we're going to see a pair of John Deere 9620RX four-track tractors working with 23-foot Great Plains chisel plows as they work up the ground to prepare a new seed bed for the 2019 corn crop. Even though it's early January, it's only about 60 days until corn starts going in the ground here in western Kentucky. And we're going to talk in this video about why this farm relies on heavy tillage after the harvest and then follow the process after the chisel plows to see how the seed bed is prepared for that new corn crop. Also, we're going to take time to climb up in the cab and see the operator's perspective of running a big tillage implement like this Great Plains turbo chisel. And we'll also look at some of the technology that helps this tractor work in the field and communicate with the second big machine to make sure that they're making perfect 23-foot passes every time. So I hope that you'll enjoy hearing and seeing these big tractors, and let's head out to the field to see how this work is completed. The John Deere 9620RX that you've been watching is pulling a Great Plains TC5319 turbo chisel. The turbo chisel's primary purpose is to break up compaction in the soil and incorporate the residue left over from the previous soybean and winter wheat crop that had been in this field to build up organic matter in the topsoil. The turbo chisel is running about 16 to 18 inches in the ground. This farm has it set very aggressive and deep to break up compaction in the field. Typically, Great Plains would recommend about 30 horsepower per shank. There are 19 shanks on a TC5319, and it's working 23 feet wide. I think you could hear it's giving this 620 horsepower tractor a pretty good workout when it is turning around and initially hitting that headland where there's a lot of traffic back and forth during the harvest season. And you can hear that tractor really dig down and pull in that ground. Typically, a TC5319 is set up with turbo culters at seven and a half inches apart on the front, but this farm has removed those, and you can see here where it is just running without those disc blades on the front of it. They don't really need to size up any residue. The primary purpose is to dig down deep, break up that compaction, and have a healthy root zone for the new corn crop that will be going into this field in 2019. Typically a Great Plains turbo chisel is run anywhere from 10 to 12 inches in the ground. So running 16 to 18 inches is pretty extreme for the chisel plow, but the farm really likes to dig down there to break out compaction like a subsoiler. 
In front of us here in the video, we can see a John Deere 2100 subsoiler and John Deere 915 V Ripper subsoiler. Those subsoilers dig down to the ground, break up compaction, but leave minimal disturbance on the top of the field. This farm likes the Great Plains Turbo Chisel because they can use it to dig down like the subsoiler, but also work up the surface to incorporate the residue and help warm up the field faster in the spring to start planting corn. In order to understand why this farm uses such aggressive, deep, heavy tillage, we need to go back to the previous year's cropping season. We'll head back to the month of June during the wheat harvest on the farm. The farm is running three big 1500 bushel Brent grain carts. Here we can see a 1596 model rolling in behind four big class eight John Deere combines equipped with 40 foot draper heads. These combines will collect 400 bushels of wheat before they need to unload. We can see the combine's big 28 and a half foot unloading auger swing out and it will unload that 400 bushels of wheat into the 1500 bushel cart. Once the cart is completely filled up, it's going to head across the field back to the road where there are semi trucks waiting to haul that wheat crop off the field and back to the farm's grain bins. All this traffic can really start to compact the soil as these machines harvest the crop. Right behind the combines is another tractor and machine. This is a John Deere DB60 planter, planting 47 rows of 15 inch wide soybeans, no-tilling them into the ground at a 60 foot pass. One of the great advantages of farming in Western Kentucky is double crop soybeans. If you have 1,000 acres of wheat on your farm, you can turn around and turn that into 1,000 acres of soybeans. So you harvest 2,000 acres of grain off of 1,000 acres of land. Those soybeans grow over the summer months of July, August, and September. And once the crop is matured in October, it's time to harvest again. Those big class eight John Deere combines come back to the field with the 40 foot draper heads. And again, they fill up with 400 bushels of soybeans and that requires the big Brent carts to haul them away back to the road where the semi trucks will haul the grain back to the farm. With double crop beans, you have double the compaction. You have a great advantage of harvesting wheat and soybeans from the same field in the same year, but you're making double the passes with the combines, tractors, and carts. And that leads to compaction, which can reduce the yield of next year's crop. That's where the Great Plains turbo chisel comes in, running 16 to 18 inches deep, breaking up that compaction, loosening the soil so the roots of the corn crop can reach down and get the nutrients and water that they need. Also, by running the chisel plow, the surface of the field is left a little bit darker and that absorbs the sunlight and helps warm up the field faster in the spring. The winter months uh, with the snow and the rain will mellow out the field and begin to prepare it for the spring planting season. At the end of February and into early March, the farm will apply anhydrous ammonia to the field using a 65 foot wide blue jet toolbar. It applies the nitrogen in the ground which provides fertilizer for the corn crop. 10 to 14 days after the anhydrous ammonia is applied to the field, it's time to think about putting the corn seeds in the ground. In order to do that, the farm makes another pass with a 55 foot wide John Deere field cultivator. This field cultivator simply prepares the seed bed by smoothing out the passes left by the turbo chisel, which leaves the field pretty rough on the surface, and then the anhydrous toolbar, which again, works the soil, but still leaves it pretty rough. Once the seed bed is ready to go, then it's time to start putting the corn seeds in the ground. Typically the farm is shooting for the middle of March, right around St. Patrick's Day on the 17th to start planting corn. Here we can see a big 90 foot wide John Deere DB90 planting 36 rows of corn. And again, this heavy tillage helped warm up the soil, help break up the compaction and helps get the corn crop off to a great start. Now that we've learned about the farm's 
chisel plow, and why they utilize tillage, let's take a look at some of the technology that helps accomplish the tillage. If you look on the rooftop of this John Deere 9620RX, you can see a yellow globe, and that is a John Deere 6000 receiver. It communicates with satellites in space, which help guide the tractor across the field on perfect 23-foot passes. It also helps the tractor talk with the other tractor running the same implement so that the machines are running perfect passes repetitively across the field and they never overlap in their work. Let's climb up in the cab of the John Deere 9620RX and get a look at the technology on the inside of the machine from the operator's perspective. Now that we're up in the cab of the John Deere 9620RX, we can see the operator's perspective of running this 620 horsepower tractor. Over to the right, we can see its counterpart, another 620 horsepower 9RX, and turbo chisel. These two tractors can use the John Deere Green Star system to communicate and track each other's position in the field. And this comes in handy when the tractors may be farther apart. And even though the operators can't see each other, they can still see on the computer system where they're working in the field to make sure those 23 foot passes line up each time. The tractor uses a Command View 3 cab. It has great visibility out the back and the front. It weighs in at 55,000 pounds. It's powered by a 15 liter, 912 cubic inch Cummins QSX 15 engine. It uses a John Deere E18 18 speed power shift transmission. This is John Deere's biggest tractor on the market today, and it comes with a pretty hefty price tag at $628,970. You need to fuel the tractor up about once a day when you're doing heavy tillage like this. It has a 400 gallon fuel tank. We can see the farmer putting the diesel fuel line in that tank. And then it also utilizes DEF, which is an exhaust fluid system to allow the tractor to burn cleaner when it's working out in the field. And it has a 22 gallon DEF tank being filled up here. As the tractors turn on their headlights and begin to work into the night as the sun sets, they put a pretty long day in already. Typically the farm likes to hit the field around 6.30 in the morning and work till 9 o'clock at night. In that time period, these two big tractors will have covered 300 acres of ground together, each one turning over about 150 acres apiece. As you saw up in the cab, they're running at about 6.5 miles per hour. And this year, it's more important than ever to get this ground covered, and the investment in these big tractors really pays off. Because when you're out in a 1,000-acre field like we see here, even at 300 acres a day, you still have a lot of work ahead of you, and these big tractors make that job easier. January tillage is not common for western Kentucky, but unfortunately, there's been a tremendous amount of rain at the end of the year. From November 1st all the way through January 1st, it's almost been nonstop rain every day. And as the early days of January came along, the sun came out and the fields began to dry and it was time for the farm to hit the ground running because as we saw earlier, tillage is an important part of their farming process and they need to plow up as many acres as they can with these chisel plows and that's why they're running longer days because even though these are big machines and they're covering some serious ground each day, there are several thousand acres ahead of these tractors to work up and make sure that they meet that spring plant deadline in less than 60 days. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching this big tractor power video showing some of the first tractors hitting the ground running in the year 2019 here in western Kentucky. It's always exciting to see and hear these machines at work and climb up in the cab, and I hope that you found this video informative. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up on Big Tractor Power YouTube next, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram, where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.